Hey, this is Renee Romeo, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a basic pole swag. Now, gone are the days where you take one giant piece of fabric and wrap it around a pole, and hopefully it turns out looking really nice if you arrange it for about six hours and get all those folds perfectly. Um, we're not going to do that. We're going to make a, a pole swag where it's all individual pieces so that you get that beautiful swag and beautiful pleated jabots that look absolutely perfect every single time. What we're going to need is some fabric, which I have. I have a nice pattern uh, from a company called Maffei, and I have some trim that I'm going to trim out all of those pieces with. And I'll take you through step by step. Um, first process is to take a measurement of your window and figure out exactly uh, the width and length of all of your pieces that you'd like. Um, and you'll see in, uh, in my drawing exactly what I'm going to do and how I'm going to modify this pattern for my specific windows. So I have two windows in the exact same room and um, each one of them are 77 inches wide. Uh, each swag is going to be 38 and a half inches wide because that's half of the distance of 77. And then I have it being a little bit uh, off kilter. I'm having them be mirror images of one another. So I, in this window I have the swag on the top. In this window I have the swag on the bottom. Here I have the swag on the bottom and here I have the swag on the top. And they're also going to be uh, a little off kilter because we're going to have this one be, this jabot be 44 inches long. This jabot is 28 inches long. This jabot is 28 and this is 44. Um, and then as you're looking at your window, you'd like to get a nice depth on it uh, where it's basically going to take up about a third of the distance um, from the floor to the ceiling. That looks best on most windows and in my case it's about 20 inches long. So that's the pattern piece that I'm going to choose. Um, and the interesting thing is, is that on the pattern, um, my width measurement of my swags actually falls off the pattern piece. So I'm going to, which means that there's no measurement for 38 and a half. And most times when you're dealing with patterns, um, these are the kinds of situations you fall into all the time because your window isn't exactly perfect and it doesn't fall into the confinements of the pattern. So I'm going to show you how to uh, modify that pattern to fit your particular window. So let's start with cutting out all of the swags first. Uh, my fabric has a pattern on it and the pattern runs up and down and there's a true top and a true bottom to it. So I have uh, the top of the fabric here and basically what I'm going to do at this point is decide whether I'm going to cut the actual swag straight or if I'm going to cut it on a bias. And the bias cut really turns out to always, always, always be the best choice. Even if you have obvious stripes, they might uh, run diagonally on it, but it's always going to be a much better um, hang to it than if you do it on a straight cut. Okay, so what that means is the top of the fabric is here and I'm simply going to fold it over onto itself at a diagonal, line up the selvage edge on one side, and then I'm going to line the pattern up onto this folded. If you are looking to widen or shorten a, a, a pattern piece, when, it, when it's a swag, you cannot do it on your outside edge where the pieces are going to be sewn together because remember they're all individual. If you start uh, messing with the outside edge, what you're going to do is you're going to affect your droop. So your droop might be a little droopier, your droop might be a little bit more shallow. So don't ever adjust on the outside edge uh, unless you're looking to adjust the, the actual 20 inch droop of that swag piece. So what I've done here is um, if my pattern piece only goes up to 38 inches. I need 38 and a half. So I'm adding a quarter inch all along this folded edge side and that won't affect my droop at all. It's just going to affect uh, my width and that's all I need. So now that the swag is all cut out, uh, what I need to do at this point because my fabric has a pattern is to make sure that each and every swag is cut from the same exact piece. Meaning that as I look at the window treatment when it's done, each and every piece is going to have a motif in exactly the same spot all along the way. And that is a hallmark of 
quality window treatments and this is what you need to do so how do I do that I need to take my existing piece my very first piece that I cut and I need to lay it on top of the fabric that I'm going to cut from my next swag I'm going to line everything up perfectly and make sure that the pattern pieces match up all along the edges and that way I'll ensure that I get that same exact motif in every single spot and this is how you accomplish that. So basically you'll see I have the same motif here. I'm going to have the same motif here. So I'm going to line this up and pull it till it gets right in position, making sure that everything's lined up here, here, here. And so you get, you get the, the gist of what's going on here is that you're going to take your pins and you're going to pin this in place. And then every subsequent subsequent swag is going to line up just perfectly. So I'm just going to cut along that line and you'll do that all the way around all four edges of this swag. I'll start cutting out the jabot. Uh, at this point I've got the pattern piece which has this little extension along the side and that's called a return and basically what that's for is so that when you're making a custom window treatment, um, like I said, if you had one giant piece of fabric you just wrap it around and you'd have light coming through on either side because it's not returning to the walls. So we're going to make this treatment return to the walls and, and create kind of like a seal up to the wall so that you're not going to get any um, sunlight coming through that area. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to grab, this is, this is the uh, bracket that I'm using uh, for this particular window treatment, and the rod is going to sit right in like that. And so if you can imagine, on one side you're going to have fabric coming off the front of the rod and on the other side you're going to have fabric coming off the back of the rod. So all four jabots need to be cut individually because they're all going to be different configurations depending on where they wind up on the treatment itself. I am going to have one that's going to be four and three quarters coming off the front of the rod and then coming off the back of the rod it's going to be uh, two inches. So, or two and a half, sorry, two and a half inches. So at the two and a half mark, I'm going to fold this return at two and a half, um, making sure that I have a half inch for my seam allowance. I started cutting the jabots, and what I'm using on the back side, uh, I'm using a contrast fabric that's a silk. And whenever you use silk in a window treatment, you need to use interlining. Now interlining is a plain flannel. You can get it in ivory or white, and it's an absolute must. Anytime you're dealing with fabric that is a silk, a very thin polyester silky like fabric because what the inter interlining does is it uh, adds body to the actual treatment so when it's hanging that's the thing that fills out all those um, loose areas and puffs them out and makes the treatment look nice and, and full. Uh, so that's an absolute must on mine. And so basically what I've done is I've taken um, the contrasting fabric and I've laid it uh, right sides together on the face fabric. And I'm going to cut every one of these out the exact same way. Each window treatment is going to consist of a front and a back. And I'm just giving you a preview of what we're going to be doing to piece all of these individual pieces together to make one long length. So basically what we're looking at here is I have a left side of my window, I have a short jabot, I have the face fabric uh, of the actual swag, then I have the lining side of the, of a, the secondary swag, and then the long piece of the jabot on the other end. Um, and if you'll notice, I've also uh, gone ahead and sewn in uh, the, the trim piece that's going to hang at the bottom of the entire jabot, going all the way across and visually making it look like it's one long giant piece of trim. So um, here's the visual and we'll go through it step by step uh, on how to actually piece this together. So we have the left side window done and so now we're going to work on the right side window. So the right side window has a longer jabot on the right than it does on the left and when you look at this visually um, you, what you need to do is c place your pattern pieces like this accordingly where we're looking at the face fabric on this and then here we're looking at the back side uh, which is the lining fabric and then again you're looking at the face fabric and then again on the smaller jabot you're looking at the lining fabric. So 
these pieces need to be alternated. You should have two face fabrics and two lining fabrics um, when you put everything together and that's going to wind up giving you that nice wrap feature around the pole and give you the right configuration uh, for this right hand side window. Now that I actually have the, the fabric on the table, I can show you and demonstrate in real life what this looks like um, compared to what was on the blackboard. So I have the jabot, this is the long jabot, and it's attached to a lining piece, and the lining piece has uh, that giant curve um, attached to the longer side of the jabot. So then next I have on here is the face fabric, and that is attached to uh, the jabot side. And the jabot side, here's the longer part of it, and that's attached to the longer part of the swag. Before you go ahead and stitch your individual pieces together, it might be a good idea to get a pole out of some kind, either from your roll of fabric or whatever, and uh, test this out and put it on top and loop everything over and make sure that all your pieces are situated in the right spot. Mine are. I have two of the finished sides and two of the non-finished sides. Um, so I know that I'll be uh, in good shape when I go ahead and sew the two pieces together. Now that all of the individual pieces are completely sewn together, uh, both front and back on all windows, uh, now it's time to address uh, attaching some trim. And I have trim that's going to uh, go along the bottom edge of the entire topper treatment. Um, so basically what it's going to do is follow the bottom of each swag and the bottoms of each jabot. And um, it might make sense to do all one length all the way across, but unfortunately that doesn't work because, again, we're flipping over the pole. So what we need to do here is we need to determine uh, the top of the trim and the bottom of the trim. And in my case, this is the top of the trim. And what we're going to do is any time you see finished fabric, um, the trim is going to be attached only to the finished fabric portion. So I have a cut edge. I'm going to line it up right here between the finished fabric and the lining fabric and put it directly onto that edge. And again, this is the this is the top of the trim and this is the bottom of the trim. So the top of the trim gets lined up all along this cut edge along the bottom. And what you're going to do is you're going to run it all along that bottom giant swag portion until you get to the other edge and then you're going to cut it there. And we'll go ahead and do that on each and every jabot and swag that has finished face fabric on it. Now, you'll see that the trim is sewn in place on all of the pieces that are face fabric. So that's ready to go. And what I've done here is now I have two completely separate pieces that are sewn with my four individual pieces. So basically I have two jabots and two swags per piece. I'm going to sandwich those together. And the way that I do that is I make sure that I have a lining fabric matched up with a face fabric and it goes on and on until I get to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and pin everything all the way around. And then I'm going to leave a section open uh, so that I can flip it right side out. And that section is one of the swags. So pick one of the swags. And I'm going to leave a section opening about that big so that I'll have enough space to pull all this fabric through and then in the end I can go ahead and slip stitch that shut. So uh, what I'm going to do now, I'll sew it and I'll show you what I wind up with and I'll press everything and it's almost ready to hang. So uh, join me and you can see what the results are. So here's how I go about closing up this opening. Um, I'm going to take fabric from the face fabric go through to the back side and then I'm just going to slip the needle in that little crease of the lining fabric so it comes out the other side and then I'm just going to pick up another little string here from the face fabric and run it through underneath this little crease and then continue on like that. You could slip stitch it but um, slip stitching actually winds up showing up uh, a lot a lot more than this type of stitch. It's more of a hem uh, and I just like it better for um, closing up these openings. 
Well, one tip for pressing out uh, your fabric is to go ahead and flip this as you go. And I've, I've actually taken the iron and I've pressed everything out to the trim. Um, and then I'll flip it over and do the opposite uh, on the next one. So I'll make sure that I'm ironing on the face fabric side. Very last thing that I need to do here um, before I get ready to hang it um, is some trim has a, a little piece at the bottom here of of uh, thread that you need to remove and that's what really makes it puff out but you need to keep it in place until everything is done otherwise your trim might you know get in the way of your stitching so uh, all you really need to do is just get on one end and pull the string and then you will reveal uh, your ultimate trim so go ahead and do that and then you can fluff it up and it's gonna look great when it hangs out now the pole is hung, the fabric has been draped over the pole with all of the face fabric facing out. And the way that I go ahead and arrange this is I know I want five pleats in the middle and five pleats on each jabot. So I start in the middle and I just do the width of my hand as gathering and so I put the width of my hand the width of my hand, the width of my hand, and the width of my hand. And the, that way, all of the pleats look nice and consistent. I get all the way to the end with five beautiful little swags here, one, two, three, four, five. And you'll notice that the trim is hanging beautifully too. And it really looks like it's all one continuous piece, but we all know it isn't. And it looks really, really pretty as it hangs out. So on the jabot itself, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to pleat this into fives and you're going to use the width of your hand so that it's nice and consistent on each and every piece that hangs down. Now, if it's not laying perfectly flat, go ahead and take a couple of straight pins, put those in place and it'll hold it until it creates its memory and then you can remove them at a later date. So this is the way that you hang wonderful, beautiful window treatments. And you'll see, I have here on the back side um, my lining fabric, which I've actually treated with a one and a half inch band of the silk fabric. And just in case you see it from the, the front side, but you won't because it's got this trim and, and uh, it'll hide it really, really well. So this is how you make a wonderful window treatment for your room. This is an open pole swag. It's very easy to maneuver once it gets up on the pole, trust me, much easier than just taking one long length of fabric and trying to make it look like this. Gorgeous. So this is Renee Romeo. Thank you so much for watching this project and I'll bring you another one in the future. Thank you.